I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be, I'm unsure about everything. Well, I've got an email here from a viewer who's in the process of going through a divorce. He hates his job. And basically, his whole world has come crashing down in the past year or so. And he's having a, a really difficult time moving beyond where he is. He's suffering a lot. He still is having a hard time accepting the reality that his wife, who he thought really loved him and cared about him and who he has two kids with, is hanging out, having fun, and hooking up with a much younger dude. And so he's just really in a bad place emotionally, mentally, spiritually, and physically because he's still living in the same house with his soon-to-be ex-wife and he's having a hell of a time. So he's got, he wrote a really detailed email about all the things that are going on. He's also having problems with his family. It sounds like part, some of his family members are a little too involved in his business, which is adding even more stress to his life. And so he writes in asking me my opinion on things and how he can have a positive outlook and what direction he needs to move in. And so before we get into the email, I got a quote that I wrote I want to share with you on this topic. And it says, the only constant in life is change. If you don't learn to change with it and become grateful for the opportunity to create something newer and even better than what you had previously, you will suffer tremendously and have an extremely difficult time finding a way to enjoy your life and be happy. The more comfortable you become at being in a constant state of creation and recreation when things that no longer serve you dissolve, the more effortless and exciting life will become to you. Most of the time, things you dream about and are constantly working on and taking action to perfect will take many years and even decades to accomplish. If you can accept this truth about life and creating your dreams, you will find yourself smiling more, being happy more, and not getting so bent out of shape when it feels like you are spinning your wheels and getting nowhere. You'll be able to keep your head down and continue plowing forward, taking action towards what you want to create knowing that someday success will be inevitable. Successful people simply are able to outlast everyone else because they persist without exception. So let's go ahead and jump right into his email. He says, hey coach, I emailed you last year about my situation. I am married and my wife cheated on me and still chooses to be with him. Currently, we're still living in the same house and are going to be parting ways and divorcing. We have two small children and it's very difficult for me to accept this right now because I grew up in a broken home and never wanted my children to experience that. I also believed that my wife would never want to get divorced. I think that's why I've been feeling so shitty through this whole ordeal. Considering the fact that she's been out of relationship mode with me since long before she told me she wanted a divorce and doesn't tell me what she's doing most of the time and also because she's not being the same person to me that she used to be. Yeah, it's obvious that you're having a hard time accepting the reality that your marriage is over. And whether your your marriage is ending or you have a relationship that just ended or is in the process of ending or you were dating this girl and you thought, hey, this is the woman I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. And a couple months later, she's dumping you and running off with some other dude. That's a hard thing to accept. Because you have to realize and you have to accept the fact that there's obviously a knowledge gap and maybe you might have made some bad choices. But at the end of the day, you have to become a better version of yourself in order to create something better. And you know, I'm 44 now and when I look back on my life, it, there's always another level to get to. There's always a new challenge. And whether it's friendships that need to end or a business partnership that needs to end or maybe living in a certain city needs to end and you need to move somewhere else, you have to be at a place in life where you become okay with change. You become okay with chaos in essence because most people will do more to avoid pain than they will do to gain pleasure. And so the average person is really kind of just going through life and unconsciously creating their life. They're just kind of going along with whatever shows up and when they don't get the job that they want or they don't have, they don't really know what they want to do with their life or what their purpose is, 
they just try to get something that's easy they can kind of smooth things over and get to a place where they're a little bit relaxed and just going along with things but most people major in minor things and so they're you and and when you think about that if most people that you're going to encounter in life tend to major in minor things that's what their standards are that's what their expectations are and if you have higher expectations than your present peer group when they see you striving to become better or become a better version of yourself they're not going to like it they're going to have a problem with it a lot of times they're not going to be very positive or enthusiastic enthusiastic or have something encouraging to say to you about that because they're not they don't have they have low standards for themselves it's like you probably heard me talk many times michael jordan attributes the reason why he was so successful is his he had higher standards than everybody his coaches his fans his teammates his family everyone and so he had his own standards that he lived his life by i personally have very high standards for myself and what i want for my life and I've had a lot of ups and downs in my life and you've probably heard me talk about this many times in previous videos. It's very difficult to go from making a half a million dollars a year to making nothing within a matter of months because you decide to move in a new direction or you realize that your heart is no longer in a business or a career that you may have spent 15, 20 years working on or perfecting. It's very disconcerting to go and do something new because when you go and you start something new, in essence, you're kind of starting all over again. Like all my background was in construction and real estate. And as a business owner, as a manager, as a leader in the company that I used to have with my business partners, I had a lot of people that worked for me. And I was good at coaching them and teaching them the skills they needed in order to succeed and become really successful. Because the more I invested my time in them, and help them to become more successful, the more successful I became. It's just like Zig Ziglar once said, if you help enough people get what they want, you'll get what you want. And it's so true. It's find a way to add value to other people's lives, especially when it comes to a career or if you want to start a business. It's all about adding value to other people's lives. And If you're not passionate about what you're doing to add value, it's going to show. Because if you don't like what you're doing, you're never really going to be good at it. You're just going to be going, doing just enough to not get fired. You're going to be doing just enough to get by because that's what the average person does. Most people, they never stretch beyond their comfort zone. It's like they get to their, their late – you know, they start out in their early 20s and when they're a teenager, they have all these grand dreams of what they want to – I'm going to become a millionaire. I'm going to become rich and famous. And then by the time they hit 30, they're working a crappy job. And they're living a life of mediocrity because at some point they realize that being successful and being a high achiever is not as easy as it may have looked on TV. You know, there's an old saying, it took, it took 10 years to become an overnight success. And like the journey that I'm on now, the life coaching business that I have, I mean, I've been at this for a little over eight years now. And those first few years were pretty lean years. I was really good at helping people but as far as packaging up what I do because think about it. Having a life coach or going for – I mean the majority of the people really don't achieve in life. I mean, it's like you look at all the people that have the wealth in the world. It's only like the top 1 to 3 percent of people. They make all the money and they have all the world's wealth. Because the average person is just simply not willing to persist long enough. They don't believe in themselves enough. They don't believe in their dreams enough. And therefore, they just give up. They say, oh, well, I'm just going to go get this average job here because it pays the bills. And you think about what effect this has on your health and the quality of your life. You start out in your 20s, early 20s, all these dreams. And you get to your early 30s, you're just kind of giving up on them. And you're living a life of mediocrity. You imagine as this carries forward... The frustration that you feel in your 40s, your 50s, your 60s, you're just trying to survive Monday through Friday so you can get to the weekend. And then it starts all over. You just – then when Sunday rolls around, you can't really even enjoy Sunday because you're dreading going to work the next day on Monday. And imagine that. Imagine getting to a place where you learn to believe and you just kind of accept that life is going to suck and achieving your dreams is not in the cards for you. 
Think about that. Are you, are you going to be motivated to go to the gym? Are you going to be motivated to eat better? Are you going to be motivated to go out and have a social life and have a good time? Are you going to be motivated to constantly try to better yourself or improve your business or in quality the, improve the quality of the people that you date or that you have relationships with or that you spend time with? Like I'll give an exa- one simple example about that is I just, I just moved this past week and I live in like pretty much the nicest building in downtown Orlando. I'm on the 20th floor. And what's just amazing to me, it's like a night and day. I lived in a really nice building I was at before, but it's like a night and day difference. People are people that have money and that are more successful and that come from a higher economic range, they tend to be happier, they take better care of themselves, they're more peaceful, they're more relaxed, they have more choices, they tend to be kinder, they tend to be happier, they tend to be friendlier. I just notice it walking around the hallways here and seeing people. Everybody is so much more willing to engage in conversation and say hello to you. And I remember the place that I was, I'd been living for a while in Orlando. It's like I'd see, sometimes I'd see people in the hallway, I'd say, hey, how are you? How's your day going? I mean, they would look right at me and not even open their mouth, not even acknowledge that I just said hello to them. I could be in an elevator, I get in, and they walk into an elevator like, hey, how you doing? Silence, they don't even acknowledge me. It's like I'm invisible. What do you think's going on in their mind? They're not very happy. They're not very friendly. Here, it's like people go out of their way to be kind. Let me get that elevator door. Let me hold that door for you. Hey, how are you? Oh, you just moved in. Oh, great. Nice to meet you. My name's so and so. Oh, well, I'm, yeah. You know, I'm having a party this week, or I'm, you know, I have some friends over. You should, I'm in, I'm in unit number so and so. You should come by and hang out and meet meet some of the other friends I made in the, in the building. It's just like a night and day type of difference. And you could just see like where people are emotionally and mentally, internally, and and makes a huge difference. And that's what the average person is like. Most of the people that you're going to encounter are like that. You're gonna see them on the street, and you see on their face, they're just not happy. They're not alive. They don't feel excited. I was talking with my chiropractor this morning, and one of the things that he was talking about and how is gratitude. And how gratitude affects your physiology. The more grateful you are, in other, in other words, the, it's a really great thing to get up every day and just spend a couple minutes. Like that's to just start your day out thinking about all the things and the reasons that you have to be grateful for in your life. And the more you can find reasons to be grateful and happy in your life or excited about what's maybe coming down the road – the less muscle tension that you're going to have in your nervous system. But the more stressed you are, the more angry you are, the more you fret about the future or you stress out at work, you literally fill your body full of acidic fluids. And that has a negative effect on your, on your body, on our bodies in, in general because it literally – your body – biologically conforms to what your thoughts are and what your feelings are about your life. And so if you're in a constant state of thinking about things that you have to be grateful for and you're excited about, you're going to be happier. You're going to have less stress. You're going to have less tension in your your nervous system because the more tension you have in your nervous system, the more that your spinal cord muscles are going to move and subluxate your vertebrae. And what this does is it puts pressure – on the nerves that come out of your vertebrae and you know, obviously then your brain loses its ability to talk to those different organs of your body. Then it starts creating health problems and you literally become – as the years go by, you become kind of locked in this negative, destructive, toxic physiology that affects the overall quality of your life. It's really a, a fascinating topic. So I mean that's a really great thing that you can do every morning. It's just – Think about what do I have, what's going on in my life right now that I can be grateful for? What's going on that I can be happy about right now in my life? I mean it's really tough when you're going through a difficult time. Like for me personally, you know, this is like – it's been eight years since I started this, this business. It was eight years ago that I sold my million-dollar house that I had on a lake and had all this nice stuff. And it's just now like eight years later, I'm really at a place where I'm kind of feeling – like I'm back at that kind of level where I used to be income-wise and success-wise and it really affects 
how you feel about yourself. You know, because especially like when you when you're enjoying your life, like this particular guy, he's enjoying his life. He's happily married. He thinks everything's going great. And then all of a sudden, he finds out his wife's cheating on him. His marriage ends. That kind of spirals out of control. And he's not happy in his job. And the reason things like this happen in life is like when you get to a certain place in life, because a lot of us, when there's something going on, whether it's taking care of our bodies or we don't like our jobs or we don't like our peer group or the relationships that we're involved in aren't really good high quality relationships and you're just kind of hanging out, just roommates, or you're just you're not really excited, you're not really passionate about one another, you're having, only having sex maybe one or two times a month because you've been together a couple of years and all of a sudden you find out that, that person has left you or has been cheating on you or is you're forming an emotional bond with somebody else and then you want to kind of hold on to what was really just kind of mediocre and kind of sucked anyways and then it dissolves and then you don't accept that, you're going to suffer. Like I was – the quote that I shared with you earlier, a big part about your ability to be happy and feel successful in life is your ability to realize and accept the truth that the only constant in life is change. Everybody you love and everything that you build in this life is eventually going to dissolve. And so what you got to realize is life really is like a constant state of creation and making yourself anew. And if you can accept the fact that it's in a constant state of flux and get to a place where you are excited about what's going to happen next. Like I had a, I had a, a old guy. Used to, this guy was like in his 90s. Years ago was my, my barber. And he had this sign on his like, – it was like this was old you – know, this guy was like a small, small place. He had a sign. It was kind of like handwritten. And it says, why do I keep showing up? And, being, and this guy had been a barber since he was in the Navy like when he was 18 years old. Can you imagine? He had been doing this shit his whole life. He literally had the same barber shop for 50 years. Same little tiny little room. He, he practiced cutting hair. Same thing. And, he, and then the sign said, why do I keep showing up every day? And the simple, simple answer to that was see what happens next. That's a great attitude to have towards life. Why do you keep plugging along? Why do you keep grinding it out? And like especially like for me when I spent so many years, like it took me four and a half years to figure out my business model. And, and it's like you know, you're two years in, you got people that know you're saying, you're a fucking idiot. It's, you had all this success. Why don't you go back into real estate? Why don't you go back into construction? Why don't you go back and do what you were so successful at? I, was like, I didn't want to do that anymore. I didn't have a passion for that. I didn't want to become like the majority of the people just kind of sleepwalking through life. And it's really tough to do that because you got to have faith. It's just like St. Augustine said, faith is believing in what you do not yet see. The reward for this faith is to see what you believe. And it's like, like I said, it's like taking me literally eight years to get back to the place where I, I once was and enjoyed that really great life and lifestyle. Because it's tough as the years roll by, it's like year after year after year, you're grinding out, you're doing all this work, and you're having an impact, but you just you're not getting compensated. And you don't see the business growing. It's like you know, it's like a slow process. I remember the same feelings like when I was in real estate. Like I remember when we we first leased this two and a half million dollar office building that we eventually ended up purchasing. And so we took like a big gamble because we went from having we were. I remember our rent was like sixteen hundred dollars a month. It, it was only like seventeen, eighteen hundred square foot place that we had, and there was like ten of us in this little. We were just packed with people. I remember a year or two years in when we had this new office building, it was just kind of like, God, when is this thing going to fucking take off? I was, you know, I was spending twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 a month in advertising at the time and ultimately I got to the point where I was spending $50,000 a month in television advertising. But it was just a slow process because you'd hire, hire a new agent in, you'd invest like six months of your time before they would really kind of get it and things would start to click and then they would, it would kind of start to pay off. And then sometimes you'd hire somebody and you'd invest all that time in them. And then they wouldn't work out. And then so it's like six months of your life and all that money that you spent investing in this person. Now you got to start all over and hire somebody new. And you got four or five people you're training at, at any one time. I just remember sitting in my office 
looking at the traffic going by, just going, man, I just, when is this fucking thing going to take off? And it, it just, everything in life is a gradual process because our society is like all about the quick fix. Give me the fucking magic pill. Give me the magic pickup line. Give me the get rich quick scheme. How do I get rich and just do a couple clicks on my computer and then a million dollars shows up in my bank account? People have this mentality. It just is not like that. Success doesn't work that way. If your life totally sucks now, if you're not happy with where you're at or what you're accomplishing, it's going to take time. It may take 5 to 10, 15, 20 years to get where you really want to be. But isn't it worth it? To spend that time, maybe spend a decade of your life where you don't really get to have a really great life and lifestyle, you don't have tons of money to spend, to ultimately spend the next 20, 30, 40 years of your life really doing well. I mean it's common sense when you really think about it but most people are just trying to survive and that's kind of like where this, this viewer is at. He continues, he says, I understand that I shouldn't fret about this, but I'm having a hard time getting over the fact that we had a long relationship before, we had a long friendship before we actually got into a relationship and then we got together and had two children, got married and the whole relationship, she had me believing that she was going to stick by me through her words and actions over the course of the relationship. She allowed herself to develop feelings for another man and I'm having a difficult time getting over that and the fact that she still chooses to see this 22-year-old kid. I know I need to disconnect from her, but I'm having a hard time doing that. What is your advice to do on this? Well, you got to look at the fact that she's already involved with somebody new. And she wouldn't have gotten involved with somebody new if, if your relationship was really that great. It was obvious that it was... It was mediocre at best and more than likely sucked because she moved on and found somebody else. And you like most of the guys that I talked to that are in these situations, hey, I thought everything was going along great and they had no idea. And then when, what, what happens is, is if every area of your life like on a scale of 1 to 10 is like a 3 or a 4 and then you think your relationships may be a 6 or a 7, it's not really great but it's okay in your eyes and then she leaves you. And then you realize that now your relationship part of your life sucks. And then it really caused you to, to look at every area of your life. And so now you're thinking, fuck, now my relationship really sucks. And then the fact that your job was a three or a four, and it's always been that. Now you look at that and it's even, it's, it's like, it seems like everywhere you look, you know, it's like just mediocre, mediocre, mediocre. And it's really hard to get motivated to, to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and be motivated. That's why I spend so much time with quality of life issues with men and women that I coach, helping them figure out their purpose because you got to have something that you're excited about. It's just like I said, the only reason I stuck with things for so long is because I could come up with anything that was more exciting and more emotion compelling than what I'm doing right now. He says, other issues I'm having is getting rid of my limiting beliefs. I'm not in a happy place right now and I'm trying to figure out what my purpose in life is and how to get back my own happiness. It's all in my thinking, right? It's like Wayne Dyer says, when you change the way you look at things, the things you look at will change. So what you focus on will expand. And right now, you're obviously focusing on all the things that suck about your life. And you say, well, what's good about my life sucking right now? What's good about the fact that I don't like my job and obviously my relationships are in the toilet? And like in this particular case, all of his friends are involved with his wife. So he's got to – he wants to create – because think about it. Every time you hang out with friends that have a connection with the ex-wife-to-be, it's going to be kind of hard because you're going to have those memories, especially if there's a couple involved. And now you're the single one in that – the couple that used to socialize with you and your wife and you're hanging out. It just feels weird and it feels awkward. But you got to look at this as – this dissolved because this relationship didn't serve you any longer. That's the only reason why things in life don't dissolve. But most people just – they're trying to hold their mediocre life together and when things start falling apart, it's like a big mirror. It's a big reflection of oh, – there's a lot of things in my life that really suck. He says, I'm feeling guilty for the way I treated my wife in the relationship, being disrespectful to her and always being miserable. What was I just saying? So he was already miserable. His life sucked but he was just kind of ignoring it. He, he was just acting as if things were great. Even you know, oh, that, that big lump under the carpet, you know, it's not all the shit we brushed under the, 
under the rug, under the carpet, it, it's still there. And so basically what happens is now you have to deal with it. And that's what this situation with your wife did. It really forced you to look inward and realize, you know what? Things really aren't so fucking great in my life. He says, she also says some of the stuff that I said to hurt her. And this is how she looked and stuff. But when I said stuff, which was never negative about her looks, I meant it with good intention. Well, if there's something that your wife, like say your wife's not, or your girlfriend's not working out. She's not really taking care of everybody because I've, I've done numerous sessions with guys they started dating a girl and she was looking good I remember one of my clients she had uh, she blew out her knee I think it was and she wasn't in perfect shape she was in all right shape but I mean she literally gained like 30 40 pounds in like three or four months and it was a point where like he just didn't even want to have sex with her anymore he was totally turned off and by this point and he just kind of went along with things he finds himself living with her at that point and he just wasn't happy. And then when he looks at the fact that you know she gained a, a ton of weight, what he realized was that he allowed himself to start living with a woman whose relationship was okay. It was really just mediocre. But when he when she gained all that weight, he realized like this really fucking sucks. And he was really miserable at that point. And it took him several months, but eventually he left. He moved out, and he got his own place. And he felt like he got his freedom back. He moved on. From that particular relationship because he was really and I remember talking to him before he even moved in with her and we talked about these things it was like and I could tell that it really wasn't that great but he just kind of went along with it and then when she gained all that weight he realized wow this really fucking sucks and so it's like it's just like for me my divorce when I was it was my 20s I should have never married her in the first fucking place the only reason I did is because I was a fucking pussy I was weak I didn't know any better and it's like after going through that experience, I was like, I will never get married again unless I am 100% certain. And I'm, like I said many times, it's like I've, I've been, since that relationship, I've come close on with two different women who I dated for many, many years. And I thought for sure those first couple of years I was dating, I'm just definitely the person I was going to marry. And you get to a place you realize, hey, the relationship just ran its course. And most people, when that happens, they start feeling all those feelings. It's just like when I was thinking about getting engaged to my wife. I talked myself into it. I didn't feel like I wanted to spend the rest of my life with her. But everybody, all, all, my, all my female friends were telling me I should. All my, my, my buddies from high school, they were all getting married at that time. And I was just like, hey, well, I guess this is the way it is. Because you know, what was the example I had my parents? It wasn't a very great example. I didn't know any better. I had a dream of what I believed a relationship could be like, but I pretty much just settled and gave up on it. And it's really tough when you got something that's okay to leave that because, you know, especially like for me when I was in my early twenties, I had spent so I had so many things, so many relationships that just didn't work out. So many girls I started to date that I really liked, and it didn't work out with them. And it's hard when you get something that comes along, it's so much better than everything else that you've had. Out of all the years you've been dating, you think, wow, if I let this girl go, God, it might be 10 years before I find somebody new. He says, I meant with good intention that she doesn't see it like that. And so he was he was putting her down a lot. And so if you, if you want your girlfriend or your wife to work out more, you don't say, God, your, your ass is like the size of Texas. You say things like, you know what, honey? I think you look so sexy when you come home from the gym and your tight yoga pants and you're all sweaty. I just want to tear those things off and ravish you. That's the proper way to call. In other words, what you're saying is, I really like what you're doing. I really like when you do this. You're not saying, you know, hey, your you know, your boobs are kind of sagging down to your knees, honey. You should really do something about that. It's not the you know, it's not the positive. It's like you want to put a positive expectation on things. You compliment her on what you like what she's doing you don't focus on the negative it's that's even is what's interesting about advertising it's that that and they learned this in the early 1900s is don't focus on you know, like if you're you got an acne cream don't focus on the bad acne focus on how good your skin is going to look after you use this product think about it when you see that on tv like like some of the, the i'm not going to mention any of the names but there's several you know drugs that that these very famous beautiful models and very famous successful or celebrities have 
and they all you would see the pictures of them with all of their clear skin now but the, you know they show the before pictures that showed how bad their skin was so you see them when their skin looks great but you also have the before pictures so you can see where they were and where they are now as opposed to just saying hey i got really bad acne i can't well, hopefully this product will work in the future because nobody would buy it then if they focused on it from that perspective he says, I hate the fact that I'm so emotional. I think this has a lot to do with my dad. He says, I'm having a big problem with him because I feel like I'm being influenced by him through all his negativity and from the way he acts and what he says. Well, sometimes you just got to stand up for yourself and say, Dad, I love you, but you know what? I'm going through a really difficult time right now and I don't need all this negativity. If he continues on that way, you say, Dad, you're just bringing me down. So if you don't have anything positive and uplifting to say, I'm going to go. I got a lot of things to do. Call me back when you're in a better mood because I don't have time for this bullshit. Life is hard enough without you trying to bring me down or tear me down. I, I had some conversations like that with my own father when I was in my late 20s because he didn't have anything positive to say about my, my business or my entrepreneurial adventures. He didn't like the way I was going about things. He was just trying to keep me from having disappointment or being disappointed but the way the negative way that he went about it i just said i don't need this bullshit in my life so if you ain't got anything positive to say i want to fucking hear it i mean i literally said that to him and he never had anything negative to say after that and a few years later when i really succeeded he told me how proud of me that he was which was the first time in my life he'd ever said it. i was like literally in my late 20s but the first time i ever heard my dad say i'm proud of you he says his belief system is is what it is, but I think he's influencing me with his thoughts and his beliefs. Well, the only way he can influence you, it's like no one will ever do or say anything to you that you don't invite them to do. And it's just like what the Buddha said. If someone gives you a gift and you don't accept it, to whom does the gift belong? He says he doesn't have his life together and he's trying to tell me what I should be doing. He says he's also stirring up sh shit with my soon-to-be ex even after I asked him to leave it alone. I think he's making stuff up in his own hand about her so he can justify getting into a confrontation with her. It's like some people are just like that. Some people go through life looking for reasons to be offended or to get pissed off about things. It's like I see comments on my YouTube channel or sometimes people send me emails. You have people that are unsuccessful telling me what I need to do to be even more successful than I already am. It's like I only listen to people that are either at my level of success or even more successful than I am. It's like a leader leads by example. He says, I can't control what he does, but he's not being respectful of my asking him to leave it alone and it pisses me off. I just feel more depressed after I talk to him. So don't spend so much time talking to him. I just want to get away from him, but I know he will be bitching if I don't call him or anything. Well, like I said, no one will ever do or say anything to you that you don't invite them to do. And so if you're feeling obligated to talk to him just because he's your father, but he's always constantly bringing you down, you've got to put your foot down. You've got to set your boundaries. You've got to be man enough and have the balls to say, hey, man, I love you, dad. But if you don't have something positive to say, I don't want to hear it. You got to stand up for yourself because otherwise you continuing to call him and let him bring you down, you're enabling his behavior. And a lot of us do this by putting up with people. I, I had a, a guy that is, he's been an acquaintance of mine for many, many years. And a few months ago, I was finally, it was just, he kept calling me, wanting to hang out. And then he would always, he'd never get, I'll call you later, man. We'll, we'll nail down that time. Then I would, I would hear from him like a few weeks later. And I finally, it was just like, fuck it. I was like, dude, you're wasting my fucking time. I'm busy. I don't have time for this. But I'm happy to spend time with you, but it's like once, once or twice a month, you call me, oh, we got to get together, we got to hang out, and then you never follow through on anything you're going to say. And that is how this guy lives his life. He's a procrastinator. And now that he's in his 40s, he's just kind of in a rut, and he's, he's just got a mediocre career. He's got a mediocre relationship, and he's just miserable. He's like, why would I want to spend my, my time being around somebody who I've long since left behind. Sometimes you just have to do that. Obviously, with family, it's kind of difficult because they're family. But with your friends, it's just like one of the things that Tony Robbins taught me many, many years ago. The quality of your life is in direct proportion to the quality of the people who you consistently spend your time with. 
He's so emotional along with a bunch of other people in my family. Don't hang out with them. Limit your time. It's like one of the things that Wayne Dyer says. He says, I have made a decision that I'm going to be at peace with all of my relatives. In other words, no matter what they do, I'm not going to take any of that bullshit on board. Just like the quote from the Buddha. If someone gives you a gift and you don't accept it, to whom does the gift belong? So when you, your, your, your father or any of your family members are saying, hey, I got this great shit burger for you. Don't you like it? You can say, no thanks. He says, they aren't fun or energetic or any of that. We're all so serious with a little bit of fun and I can't stand it. I need to surround myself with positive people, but I don't even have a social life. And the few people I know, I don't feel too comfortable around because they're mutual friends of my relationship with my wife. Great. What does this tell you? This tells, this tells you, this tells me that you need to get out there and make some new friends. The way I look at it is no matter where I go, I will make friends. People who like the same things tend to like each other. So go get involved in some activities and doing some things and some hobbies that are exciting and compelling to you. Even if you don't know anybody there, you'll meet people along the way. Just like I was talking about the new building I moved into. People are much nicer here than the place I was at. It's just People just have more money that, that live in this particular building. So they tend to be happier and they're more successful. And they're just going to – you're going to feel better about themselves. He says, I used to be happy and now all this is happening. I feel like I haven't been doing anything right in my life financially, physically, emotionally and spiritually. Well, look at that statement. I feel like I haven't been doing anything right in my life. What does that question presuppose? Everything sucks. And so your brain goes, okay, well, let me find other reasons to find what else sucks in your life. If you, instead of saying, you know, what's great about this? I can start a new relationship. I can make new friends. I can get a new job. I can get a new place. I can live where I want to fucking live. It's a gradual process. Like getting to the place where I'm at now, it's taken me many, many years to get back to where I once was. It's been a long fucking journey. And there were many, especially those first four to five years, it's like I was pissed because I felt like I knew what it was like. You know, it's like when you have a lot of success and you have a lot of wealth and you get used to a certain standard of living, it's like you go and you travel and you stay at five star resorts and hotels and all that goes away, it fucking sucks. Because you don't have as many – it's like money doesn't make you happy. What it does do is it gives you choices. And it really sucks when you don't have a lot of choices. That's why it is so important to have an emotionally compelling vision for your life, something that's emotionally compelling that you're trying to create. He says, which is where I think my limiting beliefs are. I want to have a different mindset on life and all it has to offer, but it's so difficult to figure out what I should be doing. Book a phone session with me. I really feel for my kids going through this. Plus, you've got children that depend upon you because if you don't fix this part about your life, guess what? You're teaching them to grow up and be just like you. How does that feel? How would you feel if 20 years from now your kids are just as miserable as you are today because you failed to do what is necessary to become the father that they needed you to be? That's what's really going on here. You're being called to become better than you were. You're being called to become a better man so you can get a better job, a better relationship, a better peer group and have a better attitude towards dealing with your family and focusing on things that you have to be grateful for. He says, maybe I'm overthinking it. I'm unsure about everything. My mind is like a bowl, a full, a, a bowl full of jello right now. I work in a dead-end factory job and I feel stuck now so more than ever. I need assistance as to how I can get back to being happy and fun individual. So like I said, I would, for, if I were you, I would definitely book, book a phone set because if you've watched a bunch of my videos and where I've talked about how to figure out your purpose and you still don't know what to do or what to focus on, then let me help you figure that out. When, when I do phone sessions with people who are trying to figure out what their purpose is in life, we'll end up spending a whole entire hour just in that one thing. But it's like once we, we've got a direction for you to go in, once you know what it is or what direction you need to move in, 
that gives you something emotionally compelling to work towards. And think about it. It's like when you were a kid and you wanted that, that new toy, whether it was for Christmas, your birthday or whatever. You probably photocopied it, you tore it out of a magazine or an ad in the newspaper or something. Or you downloaded it from the internet and you printed it out. You taped it to your wall somewhere and you looked at it and you fucking absolutely bugged the shit out of all your, your parents and all of your relatives and all your friends. You were telling them about, I can't wait till Christmas. I can't wait till my birthday and I get this or I get that. Because that gives you something positive to look towards. And if you have something to be excited about, it's something to look towards, you're going to be a lot happier than where you are right now. It's like you don't – like I say, it's like I'm working at a dead-end factory job. How can you get excited about a life like that? How can – if you – in when you want to date and meet somebody new, how can you get a new girl excited about your life if you're not even excited about it? That's something to think about. So if you'd like to get my help personally, if you're in a, a really challenging situation right now, you feel like your your life sucks or your job sucks or your relationship sucks or you just don't know what to do next, you just feel like no matter where you turn in your life, you don't know where to go or what to do, go to my website, click the products tab which will be at the top of your screen and book a paid phone coaching session with yours truly and I will talk to you soon. 